welcome to the Fenton Manor Sports Complex here in Stoke-on-Trent. It's hat and boxing, it's time to shine, and we've got a stack card as well. Headlining Nathan Gorman, this big heavyweight prospect that everybody's very excited about, Glenn McCrory. You know about the big guys, the IBF cruiserweight former world champ, and how excited are you about Nathan? Well, I think it's very exciting to, you know, to, to look at a young heavyweight who's 20 years of age, who's seven fights undefeated with six KOs, you know, because that's very, very young to be, to be winning. You know, so um, it's great to see him come along. The heavyweight division is is fantastic at the minute. So what a time to get a new up and coming fighter. So, you know, let's hope he can do the business. He's got fighting blood in his veins as well. The great nephew of uh, Bartley Gorman as well, who's a bit handy with his bare knuckles. But this fella's going about it a different way. But he, he's got a, a really good local fan base already, and and it's it's clear that he's going to grow and grow and grow. And as you say, the domestic division being so strong at the moment. It's onwards and upwards for him. Well, it is. There's so much to aim for. You know, it's, it's a great, great future. But I think he, the one thing he can't do is take that, you know, too far ahead. He's got to look at what he's got on tonight. Tonight, he's got a Georgian who, Gogolatsky, mm -hmm. who is, is, is tough. He's durable. He's a cruiserweight. But he's only just stepped off from heavyweight. So, you know, you're expecting him to give him a few problems, move around. So he's got something different this evening. It is hat and boxing. It's time to shine. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fenton Manor where Ricky Hatton for Hatton Boxing is very proud to bring you four three minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. On the bell, our timekeeper, Mr. Tony Dunkerley. <laughs> and the referee in charge for this one, would you please welcome from Newark, Nottinghamshire, Mr. Kev Parker. And now ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the boxers. Firstly in the blue corner. Winning white shorts with black trim. Official weight, 12 stone, two pounds, four ounces. Coming to the ring this evening in his 16th professional contest from Yeovil, Somerset, Bryn, the Bruiser Wayne. And across the ring in the red corner, winning the black shorts with white trim. On the scales at 12 stone, three pounds, 10 ounces. A perfect record, two wins, no defeats, one win inside the distance from Macclesfield, the undefeated Jake Payne. Jake, you both know the rules, I expect a clean fight. Watch your heads, don't have any low blows. Remember to obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Touch glove, lads, thank you. So our second contest of the evening, and Jake Haig gets a, a cuddle before he starts his big night off. Well, none other than Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Not a bad fella to have in your corner, but Jake from down the road in Macclesfield, just his third fight, taking on Bryn the Bruiser Wayne from Yeovil, Somerset. No wins, 15 defeats on his record, which in its own way adds a little more pressure to Haig, doesn't it, Glenn? It does because you know he's he's expected to shine. He's expected to do well. So that that's always you know that that's always difficult. But he's got the the height and the reach, good physique for a for a boxer. As long as he can use it, get that jab working. Well, you mentioned the physique. He is called High Tower, tall at the weight, super mid. It's certainly a frame that can grow into as well. You could see him at light heavy. It is. It's a, it's a good frame for a boxer because you've got that. You've got the leverage. You've got the height, the extra height for your jab, so you can get in and out of range. But you've still got to be strong enough to to back it all up. Only 22 years of age, and just having a look at Wayne in these early stages. Fairly calm in there, fairly assured. Using those long levers. Yeah, the jab, very, very important. See how he gets that extra length on his punches and then just stops Wayne short with that, that long jab. So he's got to extend that, try and bring the straight right behind it as he does there, and it works. Good combination, little stumble backwards from Wayne, looking at the canvas as if to to make out that was to blame. I think it was a, a decent snappy combo, really, from 
from Haig that did the damage there. Yeah, there's, he just missed with a, a right uppercut, which was a long, looping punch, which would have been good had it connected. Some success with hooks to the body, slight reddening up on the left-hand side of, of Wayne. Yeah, he's feeling this a little bit, those long, jarring jabs. Just falls short with his own right hand, Wayne. Well, Wayne, he's got the problem of how does he get past that jab, so he's got to try and get in a little bit quick, try and get underneath it, bend the knees a little bit. He's ducking his head, but he's not in a position to punch when he does that. He's got to bend the knees. A little flurry at the end from Wayne. I think Haig has done enough in that one. Yeah. Certainly with the, the jab and the body punches, didn't really get through with, with much Wayne trying to duck under it and was ducking his head a little bit too much and not bending the knees and trying to get under that, that jab. So a decent enough start from Jake Hake, just 22 and obviously a lot of pressure. You've got one of Britain's legendary <laughs> figures in boxing in the corner with you telling you what to do and that's it's a hard act to follow isn't it for the best of us well he's a bright lad jake as well he's got concerns outside of boxing set up his own oh, sports physio seven. business well that's good you can give yourself a massage <laughs> <laughs> oh he's got long enough arms maybe <laughs> yeah first class degree in sports recovery So far, so good in his very early career. A nice slap to that body shot. Yeah, looking at the, the redness around the arms and body, looks as if he could carry a, a little bit of power because he's certainly reddening up, and I think he's feeling these punches, Wayne. Uh, the mouth has been open pretty much since the off. Bryn Wayne. Does look to be blowing a little bit, but he's still game, he's still coming forward, he's still having a go. But all the success is with Haig. Doesn't know what to do to get past that jab, past the long punches. Ah, that's a great right hand as well, just sends Wayne back to the ropes. He does come back firing again, but maybe that's playing into Jake's hands again. Body shot hurt him there, he grimaced a bit. That's been a good punch, that right hand again, he's hurt him, and I think he might have him here if he keeps the pressure on. Certainly hurt, gasping for breath, Brian Wayne. Well, he senses it, the crowd sense it, and he is smelling blood here, Jake Haig. Now, Brim Wayne, 15 defeats in his 15 fights to date, but only three stoppages, so it would look good, it'd be a good... A good statement if he can end this one early. Yeah. Just at this stage, you know, he's just young, starting his career, it's getting the wins, getting people out there out of that in good style. With, as he's expected to do, he's expected to win this, but if he can do it good as he's, you know, as he's looking at the minute, putting some good shots together, and he's got Wayne in all sorts of trouble. And the news from the corner, Ricky, He's yelling downstairs, work the body. He knew a bit about that himself, didn't he? He certainly did. I would imagine any of Ricky's <laughs> fighters to know how to body oh. punch. And Wayne again feels that one. Hooks to the left and the right. Well, I think the referee should be looking at this now because he's shown distress signals. Wayne, as he ducks away, he's not looking. He's trying to grab now. And I think he just, the referee looks at him now. A few more clean body punches. Just needs to rip them around behind the, the elbows. So he's ducking low there and you can't see him. So perfect for an uppercut. And that's what Ricky in the corner is mm. shouting. 
Yep, the master in the corner again. It's that touch him upstairs, give yep. himself that space downstairs. It, is, he was, it, it was, he was what he used to do all the, the time. He was the master at that, wasn't he? Big, big round for JK. And I think a, a referee, you know, some referees might have looked in that and said, you know, enough's enough. And even in the corner, showing distress signals and he's not happy in there. Yeah, he's blowing. And there isn't a, a mark on Haig. No, just finding the, the combination of punches to unlock the defense. Yeah, big gasps of breath still from Wayne. Like Wayne's in pain. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Mike Jackson alongside Ricky Hatton there, just final word from the former champ. He's enjoying life as a trainer these days. And promoter, of course. Well, he's gritting his teeth a little bit, showing a bit of defiance. As he comes out to the third round, Brian Wayne, that's good. Shows a bit of grit and character. Well, he's another lad that's got a busy calendar. He's due to fight in Wales next week, Anthony Trow. So he mm. wants to see this out, doesn't he? He certainly does. But I think Hay should be looking for the, the stoppage. He's got him hurt bad enough. You know, he needs to, to try and shine here. Jab's working well. He's just ducking and diving, using all his powers to survive. Wayne. Again, a heavy right to the body. Again, Wayne sucks it up. But he's proving a fairly easy target. Yeah, he is. Again, there's the body shot that's turn. He takes a few steps back. He's moving that head. He's getting the head out of the way, ducking and diving. But it's the, the body he can't cover. He's just controlling the, the ring. Just moving him around where he wants him at the moment. He is. And these shots do look, do look heavy. There, got a nice left up underneath into the stomach. Oh, three good shots, and he's complaining and leaves himself unprotected there. Well, the referee's seen enough with that, and I think it was that moment there, leaving himself like that, just dangerous, and obviously the referee's had enough of that. Yeah, so well, it's a fine stoppage win for Jake Hay. Yeah, you know, when, when you're in no condition to defend yourself, that is when you look for the stoppage and you know he was trying to complain about something but really he was in distress and that was a, a good stoppage from Jake Haig Wayne felt that a lot he was really in distress from the, the opening round Haig used the body shot to, to good effect and I think he's lost the date next week mm. Brian Wayne but he's, he's not happy at all but he's complaining about something that, that there's certainly nothing on the hand with the shots I think no. I think he got caught with a, a good shot. There was a left that went underneath, where it was mostly right hands going to the body, and then all of a sudden he sunk a left underneath, and that I'm afraid that straight away he, he looked to walk away, dropped his hands, and the referee was was right and was very quick in what he did, jumping in there and calling a halt. Let's get the official result then with our MC from the evening, the one, the only, Mr. Craig Stephen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a referee, Mr. Kev Parker, will bring together both boxers. Contest comes to an end at 2 minutes 12 seconds of round number 3, where referee Mr. Parker stops the contest. Bryn Wayne in no position to continue. The winner, still undefeated, Jake Hayes!
And ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation as opponents all the way from Somerset, Bryn Wayne. Well, the second contest here in our Hatton Boxing Night at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex, it certainly did not disappoint. And what a night for Jake Keg. I think that was uh, some statement, really. Yeah, it was a good chance to, to see the youngster and a good chance to see his punch power. And, you know, he takes his winning run and the stoppage run one step further. So he'll be very happy with that. Nice to get that, the stoppage. Next, from very near Nantwich, is Crew. And Nathan Clark, who's got Nick Gollobs, who, again, a couple of novices, really. A couple of novices. It's a, it's a fairly even fight, so that, that's a good one to see. I don't think there'll be that much in this. Well, look, we look forward to it. And, of course, a great bill here. It is, of course, Hatton Boxing. It is time to shine. Touch gloves. Oh, he coached Nathan Gorman top of the bill here tonight, of course. And that's a great left hand in this opening round. And already, Gollobs has a slightly marked face. Yeah, he started well. Throws punches from all different angles. You know, while he was out of the ring, he was probably still in the gym. Well, decent little burst from Gollops, but he got caught on the way in there. Good right hand from Clark. So well, good aggression from Gollops. He's got a big yeah. smile on his face now, but the clever work is still coming from Clark. Just tentative a few feints now. He lets his hands go in the corner. Tries to pin Gollops in. Gollops needs to get in close. He needs to start trying to use strength. Reddened face. He's blowing a wee bit as well, the mouth open. He's feeling the pace. And Clark is, is setting the pace, isn't he? Yeah. So he's realised he's, he's in with a good little fighter in Nathan Clark. this continue to go according to plan for Nathan, it would be his fourth win on the bounce since having a three-year layoff, so he could really class himself as an unbeaten fighter after a, a tricky start to his pro career. Well, it's some good work, he's got the centre of the ring now, he's bossing the fight, he's looking for his openings in there, he coming out of it. Well, certainly game, and now plenty of blood coming from the nose of Gollops, he looks like He'd rather be anywhere else than they're here right at this moment in time now. Clark's having all the success. So a little bit of a low blow there, I think. Is that low, Glenn? It looked low to me, if I'm honest. He looks in some distress, and the referee waves it up. Yeah, he's in distress. I mean, he was getting caught with a lot of shots and he was going to be in distress anyhow, but that last one, for me, was on the low side. Well, as you say, there was no doubt who was going to win that fight. I mean, he, he was in all sorts of distress and trouble. Yeah. Okay, well. Before the winner from Winsford, Nathan Clark! Well, this night of Hatton Boxing here at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex is certainly well underway now. Another fine performance. Nathan Clark, has he maybe stolen the show to date with that performance? Well, I think he's making it clear that he was right to come out of that brief retirement a couple of years out. So he's, he's right to do that. That was a, shows he knows a lot about the game. He's good lateral movement, good punches inside, and that was a, a very good stoppage. You picked up on the fact that he's a, an amateur coach and he uses his intelligence in the ring. You could see that from the off. Yeah, you could see he had more experience and obviously the time in the gym is invaluable and you know, he was taking his time, he was giving himself the right range, he was, he was planning his attacks at the right stage and it all, it all come together very well and he, he looked you know, a, a good youngster that's, that could go a long way. It certainly is a one to keep an eye on. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on all the stuff that's going on here. A packed card and, of course, Nathan Gorman, the main attraction. But next, we've got Sam Evans against Sylvester Walczak, who's been on the scene, this Polish fella, for a good while. And he has caused problems to good, good fighters as well. So a big test as well for Sam. Yep, Sam's undefeated. He'd be looking to take that, that undefeated record a step further. But this one could be a little bit tricky, but he'd be hoping to get the win. Well, we look forward to that one. It is Hatton Boxing at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex. It's time to shine. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to shine at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex here in Stoke with Ricky Hatton for Hatton Boxing. Is proud to bring you six three-minute rounds of international middleweight action. On the bell, our timekeeper, Mr. Tony Dunkley. Referee in charge, Mr. Sean Messer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the blue corner. He wears the red shorts with white trim. He weighed in at 10 stone, 12 pounds, 14 ounces. He comes to the ring this evening in his 36th professional contest. Warm Svarjans Poland, Sylvester Wolczyk. And then the red corner, wearing black shorts with white trim. Official weight 11 stone, 2 pounds. A perfect record. Seven contests, seven wins, two wins inside the distance from Wednesbury in the West Midlands of England, Sam Evans! Well, check that one. Give me a good clean fight. When I say break, don't stop punching and step back. But I'm here at all times, protect yourself at all times. Understood? Touch gloves. Good luck. So on with the action here at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex, a night of Hatton boxing, time to shine. And it is very much that time for Sam Evans. Seven wins in a seven fight career to date, two by KO. And against Sylvester Walchok, who very well known on the scene here in the UK. He's fought some very good names. I once actually watched him beat George Michael Carman, who was a real prospect at the time. It caused him all sorts of problems at York Hall. Vestnall Green, but Sam Evans is expected to do the business against the Wiley Pole. Yeah, he's tall and rangy and long, and Evans says he models his body shots on Ricky Hatton, and I think against this tall, wily Polish fighter, that's what he'd be looking for. And he's just dug in a little left to the body there. And he's got Ricky in the corner. And again, the thing with Wolchak, he can cause problems but he, he can be off balance an awful lot and he he seems to be yep. all over the place at times which I, I suppose in some ways can make it tricky to fight him he, he, yep. he kind of doesn't seem to know what he's going to do <laughs> I don't think he does very ungainly isn't he yeah but he's had quite a few fights and losses now and that starts to take its toll if your balance isn't good to start with once the body shots start landing do some head shot there a good work, a good right, and again, Walchak hanging on there. Yeah, but normally, it's, normally you'd say a fighter looks all at sea, but he looks all at sea all the time, doesn't he? Very hard to gauge. <laughs> <laughs> again, decent work on the inside from Evans. Fighting with a lot of aggression, the overhand right. Oh, Walchak goes to ground, but that's, is that going to be awarded a, a throw to the floor, basically a slip? Yeah, it was a little bit of a throw, but it kind of upset him, and his balance is, is even worse now. I do think he's been hurt with a little bit of shock, because he is looking to, to hold. Good right hand, left tooth down again. That was two left tooth to the head, just short ones. But again, you don't know if he's in trouble or not, do you, because he's that ungainly. Well, Evans wants to make light work of this evening. He wants it over handily, and he's going about his business with some aplomb. But he's doing the exact thing. You know, he's the sort of fighter that can make things difficult for you, so don't let him get close to him. Be rough. One, two, three, and again, four, and Walczyk is not having one of his better nights. No, but he's doing the right the right thing Evans he's been very rough in there he's using his strength you know at times he's pushing them a little bit and hitting them but you know he's hurting them and the balance is so bad you know if you put your shots together land with them big ones you're going to get them mad keen there well the I big think round. Evans fancied a first round stoppage he nearly got one he's two knockdowns and one throw stroke slip that was an overwhelming round for Sam Evans and Sylvester Welchak in the corner is cutting a fairly beleaguered looking character. He certainly is. 
Yeah, he got hit with some good punches there, and he really felt the strength of Sam Evans, this undefeated welterweight from Wednesby in the Midlands. And if he's looking across at Sam Evans now, Sylvester, he's got Ricky Hatton showing him what to do to inflict a serious amount of pain in this second round. Body work and all the rest, and as you alluded to, he models his own body shots on Ricky. Yeah. Well, oh, in fact, the referee is, is had enough. He's gone over, he's had a word to the corner. There's not much sign of life from Sylvester no. Walchuk. He's waved this one off. Probably the right decision. He was Bambi on ice times 10 in that first round, and it was not going to get any better. No, that was good from Sam, Sam Evans. He looked strong. He did the right thing against a, a foreign opposition who's you know, made a long trip over here. He got to him very early, heard him very early, never let him get in the fight whatsoever. And I'd be happy with that, that one round win. And as you say, Walter was, was all over the place, wasn't he, from very early on. Bad balance to start with, which you know, often he uses that against his opponent because they don't know what's coming. This time, Evans didn't give him any chance whatsoever. Mm. Just hit him constantly. Good body shots going in and uh, a good win from the Midlands man. Well, Ricky looks happy enough with his charge. And we're going to get the official announcement with our MC, Mr. Craig Stevens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number one, referee Sean Messer accepts the retirement of Sylvester Volchek's corner. Therefore, the winner is still undefeated, Sam Evans! And please, ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation as he leaves the ring, a visitor from Poland, Sylvester Wolczyk. Well, four fights down at Time to Shine here, a night of Hatton boxing, and Sam Evans goes about his business. It's, well, the referee had seen enough. I think old Sylvester has seen enough as well, and that's a job well done from Sam. Yeah, but I think Sylvester, who goes, you know, goes a distance normally with a, with a lot of fighters, found out very early on that um, Sam Evans wasn't to be messed with. He was going to make life very hard indeed, as he did. You know, he, he worked well. Ricky sent him out with a, the right tactics. Go and hurt him to the body. He's, an, he's off balance and ungainly. Mm. You know, make that pay for you. You know, hit him, hit him where you can, when you can, and he did the job in a very good fashion. A good, aggressive fighter, and Nathan Gorman, of course, is top of the bill. It's time to shine here at the Fenton Sports Manor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to the Fenton Manor Sports Complex. Stoke. Ricky Hatton's Hatton Boxing, proud to bring you Time to Shine. This is four three-minute rounds in the Cruiserweight division. On the bell, our timekeeper, Mr. Tony Dunkley. Referee in charge, Mr. Kev Parker. And now introducing in the blue corner. He wears the white shorts with green and gold trim. On the scales, 12 stone, 12 pounds, 14 ounces. Coming to the ring in his 20th professional contest. From Hull, Yorkshire, Andy Nylon. And in the red corner. Winning the red and white shorts with black trim. Official weight, 12 stone, 8 pounds, 12 ounces. Tonight, making his professional debut in the ring from Newcastle under Lime. It's time to shine for Luke Ketchy. Fight. Remember to watch your heads, fill in any low blows. Remember to obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, lads. So, a debut in a professional boxing ring for Luke Catchy. Had a good amateur career, five Midlands titles. He made national finals, semi finals. A good seasoned boxer, but his first for Ray into professional boxing against Andy Nayland, who's a decent operator and a real test then for Luke, who's brought plenty from Newcastle under Lyme just down the road with him this evening. 
and nerves, all sorts going through his mind. No doubt, Glenn McCrory, you've been in this very position. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. Your debut is like, is like nothing else. It's the one you have to, you have to get over. But you know, he's a fairly accomplished amateur, so that will, that will land him in, in good stead. And he's landed a couple early on as well. Just rocked the head back of Andy Naylor. He's done it again now. Sharp. He's in supreme condition. And as you mentioned, his experience in the amateur ranks and also his age, he's 27, which is, you know, he's, he's got life experience, he's not a kid. No, it's a little later to turn over though, so he's going to have to be in a hurry. And I think that maybe shows in, in why he's matching somebody that's got a lot more experience. Even though he hasn't been winning fights, you know, he's still been in there and he's still been getting the rounds in. And that counts for an awful lot in this game. Katsu looks in, in great shape though. He's obviously prepared very well. And by the looks of it, he's been somewhere warm to prepare <laughs> as well. I think there's a bit of Mediterranean blood in those <laughs> veins as well. <laughs> the, uh, I think so. Well, you can't let nail on get into it and get a few jabs going. He's got to keep busy, just four rounds. So he's used to, he's used to, you know, the three round distance very much. So one, one extra shouldn't make anything. So he knows the importance of getting off quick, getting the first round in the bag. He's wearing the colors of Orm, his amateur club on his shorts. But so he knows how to defend, doesn't he, Nailon? Gets his hands up. When he's in close, he looks to hold. All experience that he's, he's gained. Mostly on the losing end, Andy Nailon. But not stopped very often. His last win in July of last year, Anthony Trout. But he is a decent operator. But that's a decent start to a professional career for Luke Catchy, edging that one. Yeah, he'd be full of nerves. He wouldn't have even probably remembered it, what went on the round before. As he sits there, be a bit of a haze. A lot of nerves, but um, he settled in now got his punches off and be looking to, to do better and start to put his shots together and think of things to do in the next round. And that's where the Nalon's getting a little bit of a confidence in there. Thought, you know what, he hasn't got that much. Are we going to see a bit more from him this round? Plenty support he brings yeah. with him, which is always a, a good thing. They've all left the bar as well, which is better. <laughs> Jab to the body, you catch it. instruction from the corner don't let Nalon get going with the jab no you can see if Nalon gets set he knows he knows what he's doing he keeps his hands pretty tight so Ketchy has to keep putting the shots on him get the body punches starting to work he's, he's tall so you can bring shots to the the side I want to see a few more angles from him. he's going forward and back a lot catchy that's nice body shot with the left hand. Good straight right as he pushes nail on back and then look for the body. Now you see he's starting to loosen up a little bit. He's starting to 
to think, starting to enjoy it a bit more. And left that rocks the head back again of Nyland. Big right hand there. So now you're starting to see a bit of the, the amateur class come through as he relaxes a little bit. And that's the, the secret of professional boxing. You've got to work hard, but you've got to be always relaxed in there. Decent pressure from Kachi. He's stalking, really, isn't he? Yeah. Hunting him down. Hunting him down. He needs to do more of that as the rounds go on and plant his legs a little bit as he looks for them hooks. So you can see how he did well in the amateurs. He's got good good balance, good fitness. You know, he's been schooled well. And the broad shoulders help as well, don't they? Help with the, the levers and working well. Yeah, but no, those body shots are good. Caught with the right hand there from Naylon. Just a reminder that he's still in there. Keep the hands up. Well, pretty comprehensive round for Lukaci there. So what words of advice would you give him now if you're in his corner? Well, uh, he's doing the right thing and he's putting the pressure on, he's, he's driving nail on back to the ropes and then he's looking to whip the, the body punches in. I think you could do that the, the, much of the same, but just start pushing the pressure on a little bit more, start putting your foot down on the pedal, move up another gear and start when you let them le left hooks go, bend your knees and really start to, to plant them. Once you've drove them back on the ropes, then you're looking to, to plant the body shorts and, and bring them back to the head. But, you know, he's going about it in a good way. Second down. Always helps when you sell a few tickets as well, yeah, doesn't it? Certainly does. Music to Mr. Hatton's ears. <laughs> Another bright start to round three. Good attack from Kachi. That's Again, good. Good work to the head and body. Yeah, nice left, right, and then just give the angle, which is good. You see he's loosening up, and as the more he loosens up, the more he thinks about other shots. Nayland getting the scent of the ring. I'd soon get him out of that. If Catchy's people should be telling their man. But Nayland still competitive enough, still trying to get his own shots, getting the odd success. Good body shot. Well, the pressure finally told and another excellent shot. Nalon takes his time. I think he's okay. He's indicated the referee's fine to carry on. I think he's using a bit of experience there. Yeah, he's bruised around the eyes as well. And I think when he just sunk that left hook in, he's been doing it throughout this contest. And I think that was uh, a tough one. Looking for it again. He's got to drive him back to the ropes. Jab worked well there. Needs to up the pressure now. He's ready to go, I think. Well, this would be a dream debut, really, if he was to...
stop and make it KO number four for Andy Nalon. And 16 defeats, not many stop him, but Kachi is really going to work. He caught one on the way in there. The round is back again, and again working the body well. Left body. That right. was the point when your man, excuse me, when your man's heard that he's got to be prepared to, to take the odd one. He's ready to, he's ready to wilt now. Now it needs a, a, just a flurry of punches. Keep the pressure on, non-stop punching. It's decent, accurate punches as well. He's not wasting many. No, this is good. Undercover and hurt is Andy Nalon, but gets through it. Good round there for Luke Catti. And Nalon looks very dejected. He's a bit banged up now as well. There's blood coming from the nose and the body works reddened him around the sides. Yeah, you see there, he's having to suck it in. He's, he's hurt, the nose bleeding and painful ribs tomorrow. He's got one round to, to try and get through. Well, I think it's gonna be a tough, tough three minutes. Well, the crowd are getting what they want from this, aren't they? I think that's the first Icelandic thunderclap I've heard <laughs> in Fenton Manor. Yeah, he obviously has a good fan base behind him. Good rowdy support. And a good start to his pro career. So far, one round to go in this four-rounder. Andy Nalen, he's just looking cautious now, he's wary. He is. Actually took a jab on the way in there, though. He's still got to go about his work, right? Use the jab to get yourself in. Push Nalon back against the ropes. Nalon desperate to survive this. He's got to try and use his own jab. Use that height, use that reach. Take it too catchy a little bit. Thought about dropping there. I think he was just waiting for the breath not to be there, but it was it, oxygen was there and he could, he could go. There's certainly no question marks over the stamina of Luke Catchy, is there? No, no, this has been good. Robin and debut, you know, he's went about his work well. You know, it's all about getting experience, but you know, he's in with a much more experienced fighter and he's going about his work well. He's, got the center of the ring, he's going forward, pushing the pace all the time. But it's just when you see Nalan wilt a little bit, that's when he's, he's got to learn to put on the big attack, you know. A real, a lot amount of punches. Yeah, the boxing skills are there, aren't they? The jab's good. A little bit more on the finishing instinct to work on, but he's a tough man to stop nail on. But has that opportunity just passed by just managing to survive Nalon, isn't he? Pull himself together and now he's got the scent of the ring and it's Catchy on the on the move. So I think Catchy's maybe he's just put in his head that you know he's gonna go the, the points route. Well, there's no need to do anything silly, he's been in control throughout. Yeah. Yeah, just going to dance his way and box his way to a good victory. And Nalen, he sees it out as well. Yeah, he'll be happy. 
able to work again very soon, <laughs> which is uh, part of the job. Luke's going to have to go back and work on that eight pack, I think. <laughs> I think he's doing okay <laughs> as it goes. <laughs> yeah, oh, all in all, for debut, decent performance there. Be happy with that. Coach would be happy with that. I think the, the stoppage was certainly there. Had he had he had he went for it more, I think he could have gotten that stoppage. But um, I think the fans will all be happy with the, the win. Well, let's find out how our referee, Mr. Kev Parker, has scored this one with our MC, Mr. Craig Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to referee Kev Parker's scorecard. Reads 40 points to 35 in favour of the winner. The professional journey starts tonight for Luke Getschi. Ladies and gentlemen, please, as he leaves the ring, your appreciation for Andy Nyland. Well, not a bad performance for a debut. Luke Catchy doing the business. Yes, he didn't get the stoppage, but he's got to be happy with that. Well, he was fighting somebody much more experienced than Naylor, and I think um, he'll be happy with the, the way he went about his work. The corner will be happy. There was a point where he could have getting the, the stoppage but you know he looked back at that you know he's 27 years of age he's got lots of experience he looked back at that and say you know what we can improve on that in the next fight and that's what he's that's what he's going to try and do now of course the next fight Ruben Aurasmith is another Ricky Hatton trained fighter and again only at 20 he's still relatively early obviously in his career but big big things expected of him and a tough fight Ryan Toms Ryan Toms yes I think um, that is going to be a tough fight this could be this could be the fight of the night it's a uh, very very well matched um, you know Aris Smith is, um, is is you know he's doing well he's undefeated he's got hat in his corner but Toms you know he's got my, my old <laughs> an old compatriot on the, the England squad uh, Ralph Young in his corner and Ralph says he's bang up for it you know he's going for it you know he thinks he can get the win well we wait and see on that one and of course Nathan Gorman is topping the bill here at Fenton Manor plenty to look forward to here it is time to shine well ladies and gentlemen Ricky Hatton's Hatton Boxing is very proud to bring you eight rounds of middleweight action on the bell, our timekeeper Tony Dunkley, referee in charge for this one, Sean Messer, and now introducing in the blue corner, winning the light blue with claret trim on the scales, 10 stone, 13 pounds and 12 ounces. From 30 contests, he has 14 wins, 8 wins inside the distance. Comes to the ring, a two time Southern Area champion from North Hall to Middlesex, Ryan Tom. And in the red corner, winning the black shorts with white trim. Official weight, 11 stone, one pound. A perfect record, eight wins, no defeats, two wins inside the distance from Market Harbour, Leicestershire, Ruben Arrowsmith. Clean contest, okay, when I say break, I'll well, stop punching and step back. Obey me at all times and protect yourself at all times, understood? Touch gloves. A really intriguing contest, this one. Ruben Arrowsmith, the young unbeaten prospect against Ryan Toms. 35 years of age, experienced, with a record of 14 wins, 14 defeats, two draws, but he comes fired up and looking to take a scalp and starts fast, trying to put a bit of heat on Ara Smith, trained by Ricky Hatton, sat there in the corner. You can see Tom's comes with real ambition tonight, Glenn. Yeah, his trainer, who I've known for a very, very long time, says he, he's worked really hard. He sees this as a great opportunity to get himself back there. He is twice the Southern Area champion, so he's boxed at a good level. The tough fights those Southern Area championships so he comes with experience and he thinks you know he can grit this one out against the youngster he 
Kearney just patrolling the ring at the moment. That was a decent short right from Arrowsmith. Very much the counter puncturing style Arrow Smith at the moment. Just allowing Toms to come in, looking to, to get good angled shots on court. Nice right hand there. Well, Toms was unmoved by that, but it did connect pretty solidly. Yeah, he didn't look like he's trying to plant his feet at the minute. He just looks like he's trying to take the sting out of Toms, just pick his shots, just see what. The senior, but quite a way, 35 Ryan Toms against 20 years in Ruben Arrowsmith. Getting caught in the way in again, Toms is boxing smart enough, really, Arrowsmith. Smith just tying him up, just having a, I think, quite a cautious start. Obviously, he's got lots of respect for Ryan Toms. Probably wants to just get the, the southpaw stance, get the range right. Nice combination there, then skips out of range. A daunting proposition, a reasonably experienced southpaw for anyone to handle. Does he just nick that one, do you think? Yeah, yeah, we picked the, picked the better punches, crisper, cleaner, caught Tom's on the way on, on the way in. And it was um, nice boxing. It was, it was respectful. You know, he didn't do, he didn't try and do anything too much, but what he did was crisp and clear and effective. It's the first eight-rounder of the evening, and he is fighting for his first title, this British Challenge Super Welterweight title. Toms, as you mentioned before, Southern Area titleist on a couple of occasions. Could have been a footballer, you know. He's on QPR's books. He's a youth team player. Yeah, had a long career. Done some, had some good fights. But on the tail end of it here and in against the... The young man, it's going to be tough as it goes on. Comes with that very wide stance, which I think, you know, for a fighter loses him height. You know, I'd like to see him get his legs a little closer together so he got a bit more height. He's been very calm so far, Arrow Smith. He's not in any way been flustered by the pressure that Toms is trying to put on him. No, I'm sure he's boxing to a uh, to a plan. I mean, his record suggests he's not a, you know, the biggest opponent. Two stoppage in his in his first eight. So you know, I think he's more the thinking sort of boxer. And in this sort of fight, I think that'll that'll serve him well because you know you don't want to just go wading into a fighter who's experiences Tom's his hands. Drop to the body there, Arrowsmith. And decent uppercut, followed up by a left. Yep, you're, you're exactly right, Don. You say, you know, a thinking sort of fighter, isn't he? You know, he's waiting for his, his opportunities and he's, he's finding them with some very classy eye catching punches.
And he does have a little bit more time to work his way in as well. It isn't the blood and thunder of a four-rounder. Exactly. You know, you've got to you've got to think. You've got to give fighters like Ryan Thomas a bit a bit of respect. You know, and and not play into their hands. And that's exactly what he's doing. Yep, picks it up. Nice combination. Started with the head and then finished with the body and didn't know what to do there, did he, Toms? And I think that's posing a problem now. Toms is now starting to think, what, what do I do with this kid? You know, I've got to put some pressure on. I've got to try and win a round. But as soon as I do, he's got me. Caught one there, little hook, but another good round. There's a rue smile on the face of Arismith that he did get just caught a little bit, and Ricky was quite clear, don't take chances. That was the message from the corner, which I'm sure he'll now reiterate. I'd Top. like to see him bring his own jab into, into play a little bit more. You know, he's, he is on the back foot all the time, and just looking to counter. You want to see him show a little bit more as the rounds go on, which I'm sure we will. There's Ralph Young in the corner. It was a Young England team with oh, me a long time ago. Good little, good little fighter. Now a good, good coach. What he can't do is let T Toms start to build attacks, which Toms has to do. He's got to start doing something. He's got to start getting busier. He's getting caught on the way in, so he's got to try and he's got to try and get in quicker. You know, he's he's coming in too slow. He's he's, he's leaving that gap just too long. You know, just standing out of range, Toms, and and that's just falling into Ruben Arismith's hands. Really got to up the work rate, Tom's. Got to have a have a go. Try and unsettle the youngster. Well, Ara Smith, an excellent amateur. And again, he's only eight fights to his name, but he, he does have a, a great deal of obvious ring craft, doesn't he? I mean, you can see this is a lad that obviously Box for England won five national titles. And, you know, lots of, is it, are quite rightly expected of him, and a cracking fight at this stage of his career. Yeah, you know it's very early in his career to take on someone, someone like Tom. So they they know what sort of talent he's got, and um, you know commend them for doing that. But he's got a he's got a tough style to work out. And you know, I think he's he's gauging this as well. He's got a you know he's got a good or a decent southpaw in there with him, and he's just bit by bit he's just picking them apart, isn't he? The think, most spite in that combination yes. that he's just. I can see as the runs go on, we're going to see a little bit more spite, and just dig in the you know bend the knees and get a bit more power in those punches. has settled into the fight now he you can see those openings and again maybe yep. is this the point that maybe Tom starts getting a wee bit frustrated well Tom's 
is gonna because he's he's got to try and do something. He knows he's got to try and make a fight of it. You know, he he wants to win this fight, and to do that, he's got to he's got to do more. And when he does more, he's gonna fall, you know, fall into those punches, and he's gonna pick up the pace. A good flurry at the end. A little show of respect from both fighters. I think yeah, the smile tells the tale. Maybe at the end of that round for for Ruben. Probably feels he's, he's found his feet in the fight now, found his range. Those combinations are coming now, and as we mentioned before, there's a little bit more meat on them as well. But you know, also what I'm what I'm liking is to see you know Ricky Hatton, who is an all-action fighter, you know, working with somebody, work you know, training somebody who's very much different to that, mm. and you know, he and he's you know he's planning out a strategy with a, a different a different style of fighter, and that that you know that's that's what a good trainer is all about. He was all about pleasing the crowds, Ricky, of course, but, you know, a skilled amateur as well, a very, very skilled, and, and maybe that's always overlooked, really. When people talk about Ricky, it's this pressure fighter, body shots, and, you know, all aggression, but there was a lot more to his game. But why people like him was he wanted to get the stoppage, you know? <laughs> but here, he's teaching his fighter how to win, how to get the win, and, you know, he knows he hasn't got the same style as his, and that's, that's, that's the mark of a good trainer. And Ricky pulling off a great job with his recent world champion, yep, which course. was fantastic. And that Zakianov having a great win at the weekend against Rashi Warren in the in the states. So and to do it over there in the manner they did it. Yep, I mean that's really showing his mark as a as a trainer. And again, it reiterates your point about Ricky and his training prowess because. You know, this wasn't a Kazakhstan with the Olympic pedigree, as, uh, as they often are, of course. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Somebody's had for, for quite a while, somebody who doesn't box like that, but to go in and beat a, you know, an Olympian who's very good, you know, they had very high hopes for him, pull off a, a great win and get that world title. Is a uh, big, 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 big feat, and congratulations to Ricky Hatton, the trainer. Probably the first time Ricky's been to America and 35,000 people haven't followed him. <laughs> That's true. No quarter, a left hand there. Good punch from Toms. And he's still not discouraged, is he, Ryan Toms? He's still... No. Still coming forward. I would like to see Aaron Smith throw a few more, a few more punches. A little bit, you know, ones and twos that he's trying to get on. You know, I think he can throw good combinations. Just holding Ryan Toms off there, getting a, a little warning. Oh, that was better from Aaron Smith again. Uh, Chris one two. Right on the button, showing his fast hands. Yeah, good right and left hook, and it's good work against the, the South Port. Yeah, decent from Tom's as well, heavy shot. Not as accurate, but you know, they all, they all work. Again, getting the better of it. But Ruben Arasmith comes back with two good ones of his own. Nice uppercut, left hook. It's always the, the cleaner work. You know, he's getting through with some solid punches, Thomas, but the cleaner, sharper works from Arasmith. Picking up round after round for me. And just 20 years of age, I mean, the power that he's shown in two of his last three fights he has stopped two of his last three opponents so the, the KOs have come recently that you would imagine the power as he is fully grown which he probably isn't yet at 20 years of age it will come a little bit further as well, won't well it? oft, come often on. it's hard to show the power early early in your fights because you're fighting you know often journeymen who are you know who don't get stopped you know and are, and are very good at not getting stopped but as the fight is become more competitive then that's when your opponents leave themselves open and that's when you know you can get you can get more of your stoppages 
So, you know, that's good that he's, he's, oh, his stoppage yeah, rate's yeah. improving as the opponents, as the better opponents come. Second out. Of the fifth round and Arrowsmith in control but certainly Tom's has shown plenty of reason that he still has to be cautious nice countering punch and then just tied his man up Yeah, at times it's a little bit messy, but you get that often with the southpaw against a, an orthodox. There's nothing cynical in there, is no. there? It is just simply that, I think, isn't it? And also, Arasmus, you know, he's he's using his brain a little bit. He's tying his man up. He knows he knows Tom's is strong inside. He's not going to let him fight his fight. Tom's getting some success, though. Got the better of that exchange. Tired for the uppercut. Not sure it caught fully on, but still thinking in there. Tom's, you know, he's obviously got himself in shape. He's pressing forward, looking strong, isn't he? But you know, a lot of this, a lot of this game is also, as Ricky was so good at, it is, is about being exciting. And you know, he needs to just show a little bit more. I feel, you know, he's caught Thomas with some decent shots. You know, he's obviously got, he's got speed, he's got a bit of power, but he's looking to hold on. He's looking to hold on in this exchange. This way, a young fighter like him should be throwing combinations inside and then moving on the outside, popping with shots from range. So is Tom's, is the strength just starting to maybe, you know, just slow him down a little bit. Again, Tom's catches with the left hand. He only seems to know one way to move though, Tom's, and that is forward. But he's been less effective for me in this round. Um, Tom's getting the better of it at times. That was better. Tom's still looking strong. Good left hand, then a right hand from Tom's. And, and another one. right again that just caught. The tide just changing a little bit. It's not as comfortable as he anymore. And a better round, round on the court there for when Ryan Tomes. The body language tells its own story as well. It was all smiles the last couple of rounds, bouncing back to the corner. That was a slightly dejected and forlorn looking Ruben Arrowsmith that made his way it back. It was. You know, I think, the, I think the strength and power they said you know, I spoke to the uh, Tom's camp. They said, you know, he's worked really hard. He feels, you know, there's not many chances for him left. He's, they see this as a chance against a youngster, maybe pitching around a bit too, bit too fast, too soon. And for the first time, we just saw a little change in the fight. He's not short of ambition, Ara Smith wants world titles. Close After this fight, if it was to go his way, he wants a Midlands area title fight. Down, he's got it all planned out, but of course he knows he's going to have tough nights like this night. Yep, well now is the, the time to start picking it up and showing what you've, what you've got. Good skills, but for me a little bit too much on the back foot and looking to hold when when Tom's comes in close, you want to see a young fighter like that get out of there, move away and stop throwing combinations. Oh. 
Decent heavy right again from yeah, Toms. And the follow-up left and another, and another another left from Toms who's starting to look strong. And a bit of panic again. Arrow Smith quick to hold. This is he's gonna fall foul of the referee if he keeps doing this. And he's got in a good talking to by Sean Messer. And is this the game plan from Ryan Toms? They were confident going into this. Did they think the second half of the fight they could start getting to the youngster? Well, this is the, the time in the fight where you've got to show character. Young, undefeated. Good amateur, undefeated as a professional Aerosmith. This is where he needs to show what he's made of. That's a combination there. He gets through. And a wild right swing from Toms. A bit of an air shot from him. Toms keeps coming forward though. Ricky Hatton, please, with that backhand. Want to see a few more of those. Well, body shot from Toms, and then the, the left hook from Arrowsmith. Kings quick to hold as soon as Toms come close to him. So he is feeling the strength of, of Ryan Toms. A little bit man and boy stuff in the 35. He's a strong, fit, rugged man. Well, this is proving to be another tough round for Ruben Arrowsmith. And he's holding again, and I think he's in danger of getting a one. But he is Ooh. to be deducted a point for constant holding. Well, that makes a difference because Ryan Tom's winning this round a point off. That's a 10-8 round. Good flurry from Aris Smith. And again, a nice little burst at the end of the fight. End of the round, I should say. Yeah, but this is harder than I think they thought it was going to be. Um, difficult round. He paid the penalty for a consistent hold. The referee was right to do that. He was, every time they come to the ropes, he was holding Toms. So, certainly getting interested now. So he's got a... a Six minutes. Well, I've got him one point ahead now. Arrow Smith with two rounds to go. And he's, you know, I think Ricky knows the score as well. He's reading the riot act in there. Second down. This is an important fight for him. He's got to pull it out. Uh, Tom's again launches himself at Arrow Smith. Well, Tom's has certainly he's done well, hasn't he, to get himself in shape. I think a lot of people would have thought this might be an easy fight. Nice shot there from Arrow Smith, though, showing class. But boxing, professional boxing, you know, you can have the skills, but when it starts to get drooling, it's about strength. It's about determination. Standing off a little bit, Tom's. I'm surprised and we come out we come out rushing for the first 10 seconds and now now he's starting to stand off and there's some nice counters again from Arrowsmith. He's given himself a bit more room.
Tom's southpaw jab. He likes to turn it into a hook now and again. But he, yeah. he kind of feels his way with it. Yeah, well, there's nothing in this round so far. He started well, Tom's, but Aris Smith, you know, he's getting some decent counters off as well, so it's, it's all to play for. Is he pinching this round though, maybe Aaron Smith? Is he, Ooh, is he doing it's, enough? It's, for me, he's not doing enough to win it, but then Tom's is not doing enough either. It's a bit of a stalemate, I think, this round. You know, I think they both know the importance and how close they are to, to turning it around and getting the win, and neither one's really getting anything substantial through. And Tom's not happy in there. There. Nothing scoring there. No. This is a. They've both sort of negated each other in their style, haven't they? Too much holding, missing with punches. And very difficult to decide for me. That's a, a level round. I couldn't split them there. Neither one had anything. Of consequence to, to really, you know, a few punches at the very beginning of the round from Tom's, Aris Smith, a couple of nice clean ones, but not a lot in it for either man. So for me, I've got level going into the, the last round, all important final round. Well, I'm sure both corners are making that point very clear to the two fighters. It could pretty much all be on this final three minutes. Well, Either one needs to do a lot more than they did in the last round. It was a bit of a standoff, wasn't it? I think they were both a bit scared to commit themselves, but I think this round should be different. For the 10 seconds. Second day for the eighth and last round. Good right hand to start the round for Ara Smith. Finds himself in the corner. Yep, he started the bed up. Nice and short. Has he got the character early in his career to pull this one off? Down to the way out for me. Tom's has come on late. Either one's just got to start getting some punches off, haven't they? They've got to catch the eye. It's not really in the makeup, it seems, of Ruben Aris, but he's going to counter and counter. Good boxing, but he's, he's pulling it off there with a nice shot. That's, That's eye catching. One, Chris, one, two. Yeah. And, and again, again, this is good. He's picking it up. This is where Tom's needs to dig deep, needs to. Just put the pressure on, just let it all go, let the arms go. <laughs> Counters again, this is looking better for Farrah Smith. Giving himself a bit of space, not, not able to close the gap between the two. Toms. Up there, certainly eye catching stuff from Arrowsmith now. Yeah, yeah, much better on the back foot. He's got his concentration together, hasn't he? He's not looking to, to hold, he's looking to land cleanly. This has been tough for Arrowsmith, though. This has been a test caught there 
with a left hand. Can he get a big finish, Toms? Arrowsmith trying to hold. He's tired, hasn't it? This has been this has been hard for for Arrowsmith. A real test for him, and nothing wrong with the conditioning of the 35-year-old Ryan no, Toms. No, nothing at all. But Arrowsmith still managed, even though he falls around, to get a, a couple of shots off. You know, he's still the one that's thinking about throw the arms, throw the punches. And a good right hand, a good left there as well to finish that yeah. little combination. And a good way to finish the fight yeah. and the round for Ruben Arrowsmith. And you feel everything taken into account, the point deduction, everything else, that he's just, he's just pipped that one. Yeah. He's done I, enough. I agree. For me, it was all on the last round, and I think cleaner boxing. You know, he had to put up with it. He justly deserved the, the warning, but I think he's pulled it out there. Good talking to from his trainer, and that seemed to do the trick. I think it would with most people. Though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly what might be classed as a learning fight for a 20-year-old boxer yes. with, with eight fights Very in Very much so, but I think that's, that'll, give, that'll give the... Darrell Smith camp, that'll give them a chance to, to, to gauge where he is now and what the next movement is and where they go from here because I don't, for me, you know, that was good. He's a talent, but he's not ready to be, to be moved too soon. He's got a little bit of work to do yet, but what he did, he did well. Well, there's a smile on the face of Ryan Toms. He's done himself no, no harm whatsoever. A great performance. Let's get the, the official result then with our MC, Mr. Craig Stephen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will agree this was a hard-fought contest and a referee, Mr. Sean Messer, has asked me to ask you to join him congratulating both boxers. So we go to Mr. Messer's scorecard. It reads 77 points to 77 points. It's a draw, ladies and gentlemen. So you get appreciation, please, for Northall's Ryan Toms, and he remains undefeated. Ruben Arrowsmith. Well, Fenton Manor Sports Complex, a little lull now before the action gets back underway, and I suppose a little whiff of controversy, a draw for Ruben Arrowsmith. We thought he'd probably just done enough, but that's the way it goes. He's a young lad as well, and he'll learn from that, Glenn. Yes, he will learn from that. I think that, that is the sort of fight it was. We expect a little bit more from him. He sat back. Uh, Ryan Toms, it was a good fight. And, and, you know, I told you going into this that his camp said he was well up for it and really expected to get the win. You know, They were thinking against the younger man, it was maybe a bit too soon. It proved that maybe it was a little bit too soon. I did think he just nicked it, pulled, you know, showed some character. But I think the draw won't do him any harm at all and he'll come again and you know, he'll be better for that. And I think with Ryan Toms, it, uh, it's often what you see, what you like, and it was constant pressure from him, wasn't it? So It was constant pressure, but he didn't get his punches off. You know, he's been to the punch too many times. He was favourable, you know, well, not favoured really, because he was holding Arrowsmith, but you know, he, got, he got that point deduction, so that helped him a bit. But Toms came to fight. It was good to see him in such shape with 35-year-old. You know, you've got to respect him a lot for that. And you know, overall, I think Arrowsmith will, will have learned from it, a very good fight, and go on you know, to better things, but I think he needs a little time of just regrouping. Now our next fight, Kieran McLaren, Michael Mooney. It's a rematch, they've done this before. It's an eight-rounder this time, though, as That's well. So right. tactics, everything else will come into play, I suppose. And Michael Mooney, you know what you're gonna get with him, and, and Kieran McLaren, again, local boy, lots of pressure on. Yeah, lots of, lots of pressure on. I think McLaren maybe will suit the, the eight rounds, might suit him a little bit more. Uh, he won last time, and he might just get it better this time. But Mooney, you know, as you say, with the, the fans behind him, might be trying to push that bit hard. and might think it's swing his way. So another good fight on this bill. And of course, the big man still to come top of the bill, Nathan Gorman here. Hatton Boxing, time to shine. Well, we have a British challenge. Super lightweight title at stake for these two fellas. They've done battle before in a four-rounder. McLaren, the victor on that occasion. This, an eight-round contest. McLaren with all the hometown support. 
from Stoke. Gunner is known against the madman. This is where McLaren needs to use his, his boxing skills to good effect. He's 4 0 last time. It's that jab that he needs, and then he turned it into a nice uppercut. So that's that's good. That's to sort of give himself a little bit of room, pick his shots. The minute McLaren just a bit too clever for him, isn't he? He's kind of he's in control in this round. Mooney landed a few. The clown's still probably done the better of the work, but he's enjoying it. And that's the racing team, not the, not his opponent's team. Nice defense there from McLaren. He's, he's, he's being beaten by McLaren. McLaren is having the, the better of the fight, no doubt. He's, he's producing the better work. But, you know, the face of, of Moody would tell you that he's had a relatively yeah. easy night. I mean, if you just looked at, it, at his face alone, he's not in any way marked up or bruised. He, he's, his defense is defeat, deceivingly good, I think. Good luck to from Moody. Acknowledged again by the smile from McLaren. Both starting to load up a little bit. I think maybe as they getting tired now they can't move as much McLaren is showboating now as well <laughs> a little dance he did get caught from Mooney nice little flurry of activity there from McLaren it's, it's like that when when he shows the better work isn't it <laughs> I think you'll find a lot of us are like that <laughs> But the crowd, you know, they've enjoyed this. Uh, you look around and they're all very attentive to this. It's been an entertaining little fight. Yep. But there we are, the end of the eighth round, and there is inevitably the embrace of these two fellows that do have tremendous respect for one another. And still undefeated, Kieran Gunnar McClellan! Well, what a cracking battle, McLaren and Mooney. McLaren getting the right verdict as well, but the fans did enjoy that, Glenn. They did, they've done it once before. It went the same way, did it again, much the, the same. McLaren always just had a little bit too much for Mooney, but Mooney got to the, the crowd's heart because you know he really tried hard, and that's a, the sort of fight he is. If McLaren had let up, you know, he'd have been in there, but he just didn't have the skills to match McLaren. You know it's the business end of the evening when Neil Diamond comes on <laughs> and we're getting a bit sweet, Caroline. That means that it's the penultimate fight of the night. It's Morris against Fields, the unbeaten Morris against Fields, who has, well, the defeat of been tricky, like Gidget, which shows you everything about him. He's a very good operator. Yeah, Clifton Mitchell in the corner. He'll be trying hard. Morris, he's undefeated. You know, can he, can he bridge that gap? You know, he's fighting an experienced fighter, but he's the one that they're looking forward to, to, to move his career career on so I'm expecting a, a very good fight on the build-up to what we're expecting a, a good showing from from Nathan in the, in, the, in the big one yeah Nathan's fans are here as well making themselves heard but it's just a word Dave Colwell looks after Ryan Fields he's here he's got a, a big fight coming up as well but of course he still wants to look after all his lads and he's here supporting Ryan Fields tonight yeah you know it's good to see the the, the trainers um, you know, of the, of the big fighters, you know, they've got their, their guys on the, on the bill as well and they're, they're, they're here and you know, it's just as important for them to get a win than it is for the big ones. I know you're down to join in with Sweet Caroline, so <laughs> well, on with the action, it's Morris against Fields and still to come, and Nathan Gorman, it is time to shine! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Fenton Manor it's the chief supporting contest of the evening. It's time to shine. And Hatton Boxing is very proud to bring you 10 rounds of boxing for the Midlands area welterweight crown. Our officials at ringside appointed by the Midlands area of the British Boxing Board of Control. Our steward in charge is Mr. Richard Vaughan. On the bell is our timekeeper, Mr. Martin Fallon, and when the bell rings, referee in charge, Mr. Sean Messer.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the boxers. Firstly, the challenger. Boxes out of the blue corner, wears blue shorts with black and white trim. He weighed in at 10 stone 7 pounds, has a 13 fight record. Nine wins, four inside the distance, only three defeats, one draw. Former Midlands area welterweight champion from Belper, Derbyshire, Ryan Fields. And in the red corner, wearing the grey shorts, blue and white trim. On the scales at 10 stone, 6 pounds, 14 ounces, a perfect record. Seven wins from seven contests, two inside the distance. He is the reigning, defending, Midlands area, welterweight champion from Ludlow, the undefeated Craig Murray. I can't do it. I'll give you the instructions in the changing room. What I, you know what I expect from now. Okay, on the break, step back, no punches. Protect yourself at all times and obey me at all times. Understood? Good luck. So the penultimate contest of the evening, a 10-round Midlands area title on the line. Craig Morris, the holder against Ryan Fields, who's held this belt before. And I feel this fight just warming up. Tempo in this third round. That's good from Fields to the body. That's where I think, you know, I'm sure the corner, I'm, I'm obvious the corner, saw what happened at the end of that round when he just seemed to, he just seemed to dip, didn't he, to the body shot. So, oh, I that was the body. That's yeah. That's exactly what they saw, and that's what he's been told to do as he comes out here, and that could be the difference. Much better from Fields now. So he looks to sink the, the right uppercut right in the solar plexus of the southpaw. And it's working. This is much better for Ryan, Ryan Fields. And a mini crisis of sorts for Morris at the moment. Doesn't look too happy. Fields looking stronger, isn't he? Good moving right hand. He caught on the glove there. Morris managed to defend that one, but he's warming up to this job. Ryan Fields. And the referee Sean Messer has to get involved just the first time, really separate them. Really down to Morris, you know, he's got to go out there and use that jab straight down the middle. The, the right left from the south post stands straight down the middle. If he gets involved like this, you have, you have that feeling that Fields might just have a bit more strength inside. Morris just making Fields miss on a couple of occasions there. I just wonder as well, though, how much energy is Fields expending. He certainly has put it on Morris in this round. Yeah, body shot going in at the end throughout that round. Finally gets, he gets himself back in the fight, Ryan Fields, with a, a good round. Solid, hard, punishing work. And will that be the difference? Will the physical strength make the difference in there there you see Clifton Mitchell instructions are clear hammer that body 
managed, of course, by Dave Colwell, yep. who has something of a fight coming up. He'll be in the corner, of course, for Bellew against Hay, Tony Bellew, his man. How do you see that one? As, as cruiserweight stroke heavyweights, you know, the, <laughs> you know all about that scene. I do. For, for me, he's just, a, he's just taken off a little bit too much, moving up the heavyweight. I, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to, for a payday, but for me, that's, that's, that's it. And um, I see a, an, early, an early win for, for David Hay, if I'm honest. Second test, round four. Back to this one. Ryan Fields getting himself back into the, the fight. Strength, and that's what it might come down to, strength, determination. Or can Morris get him back on the jab and use the, the boxing that he showed in the first couple of rounds? It's what really as well it would take out of Fields if he wants to try and keep this pace. That's a good shot, it caught him with the left. In the corner for Morris, not too happy. They wanted to liven up. He's been caught a couple of times already in this round. Yeah, big left. Morris come, come back with one of his own. But he's going to have to work a bit in this one. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah, that's the, the straight punches of, of what Morris is best at. Because the minute he gets close in there, it's in his mind fields to get to the body. A decent shot there. Fields just stopped in his tracks briefly. Now we take turns on the ropes. It's getting a little bit messy with the South Pole Orthodox stance clashing a bit. Both, both getting through with some decent punches here and there, aren't they? Yeah, indeed, both ones. having their moments. Yeah. Right hand, left hook. Fields coming on good there. And the body, and the body shot. shot. A little winch from Morris, who's in a bit of trouble. Fields now senses. He's got him in all sorts of trouble. Bit of holding from Morris yep. to keep him off. Nice left hook as he, come to, as he turned his man. And now it's Morris on the front foot. Fields looking to wind up a big one. Good entertaining fight though. That's what the crowd want to see. Certainly has now yep. turned into <laughs> an eye-catching spectacle. And it's gone one way, then the other. They're both getting success. That was a good, good round. Yeah, I think I'd have to give it to Ryan Fields. Well, I think Morris, again, had pockets of success. Yeah, I think he did, yeah. Most overall, the, the, the heavier shots landing. Via fields, Morris was unable to keep the keep the form, keep the jab and the, the straight left going in. You know, he's got to keep to that box, and that's his game plan. The minute he starts getting in, the strength seems to tell from Ryan Fields. And you know, but it's making for a good fight, <laughs> good blend of styles. And incidentally, how do you see the fight, Bellew and Hay? <laughs> Not letting you get away well, with that yeah. one. Well, I just like to defer to the experts. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, I, wouldn't disagree. Has an I wouldn't disagree with what you said, to, to be perfectly honest. I know Dave Colwell will feel that he's got a plan and he's he's got a way that that, that his man can win, of course. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I just uh, yeah. I mean, I know Hay was a cruiserweight too, of course, but very very good one though against the very very best. And, I've got, and Tony's light heavy cruiser. Yeah. Is it just a step too far? Soon see. Well, this one's lively enough for our attention at the moment. Morris. 
He's trying to put it on Fields, that's a good oh. right hand from Fields. Didn't stop Morris in his tracks though, he's still pushing forward. They're going to prove the strength, these two, and their chin, and their conditioning. Nice body shots. And Morris tries hit body punch of his own. Good work from Fields, building up the combinations. Body and head. Slides off the ropes, that's good, and then good. It's Morris backing up. Well, Morris is coming forward, but he's getting caught on the way in, isn't he? Better work from Fields there, and he comes off the ropes with a good left hand. A slap to the body, the right hand of Morris. Good right hand from Fields. Big swing. And both men will be feeling in a rough, tough fight. Yeah. Oh no, they're earning their money in there. Good body shots from Fields and the right hand getting the better of it again. Still on the front foot, Morris, but he walks in the punches doing that, doesn't he? He's got to come in behind that jab. Oh, and a good left again. It, oh, I feel to a sense. He's got Morris in trouble. Just a little stunned moment from yep. Morris. Definitely. And another two good punches. Good round for, for Morris there. The eye catching stuff at the end of that round. He's just blooded the nose of Morris as well. I think that probably just puts Fields a bit in control now. Yep, I think so. Yeah, no, that was a that was a solid round. Finished finished very very strongly, didn't he? Landed some some good punches. Working furiously in the corner there. Is there a dangerous world? You're an unbeaten fighter. You, this is just your eighth fight, and you start feeling a bit sorry for yourself in there. Now yep. he's got the blooded nose. It's not you know it, it's, he's in territory unknown to him. Yeah, this is where it you know, really takes. A bit, of, a bit of character, you know? I mean, he hasn't tasted defeat yet, so he doesn't know what that's like, so that's that's where he's got to pull something extra out. But they, they look... They Ryan, look Ryan fight, the fighting like a man that, that has had those speed bumps in his career already, and of course he has. He has had a couple of setbacks. But often the experiences of setbacks stand you in better stead. You know, as you move forward, you know, often your undefeated careers are, are, are all well and good, but it's who you're beating, and all of a sudden you come up against a tough opponent. You've got to really test your metal. Getting caught on the way in, he's starting to find the punches. Fields for the for the southpaw. He's starting to get the left hook and the straight right hand. You know, the punches for the southpaw. Again, good work to the body and the head. Yeah, and a nice from fields. Yeah, he's pushing out a combination. You know, three punches. There's a good left hand from Morris and a nice crisp jab. Oh, good left hand there. Beautiful from fields. And again, 
Just the having more, the final say with these exchanges. Yeah, the more eye-catching punches are often fields though, aren't they? Yeah, but he's as game as they come. Craig Morris undefeated. He doesn't want to give that up without a fight. Brian Fields been here before. Done it before. Can you pull it out again? Can you get the Midlands area title? Oh, good left hand and the counter. They'll know they've been in a fight tomorrow. <laughs> this a great is. way to warm up to the main oh, event as it well. It certainly is. This is rough and hard and brutal. Gum shield out there, I think, from Fields. Is he trying to buy a bit of time? He's trying to hold. I think he could be, could be feeling the pace more than... Yeah, Morris feeling the pace for me. Fields looking at the corner, I think. You know, did he spit that out because he was in trouble? Was he starting to... But it bought him a bit of time, if he did. Did the right thing. Again, good work from Fields. Combination, uppercut. Swinging the hooks in. Less coming from Morris, though, noticeably. Has he made the dent, Fields? And again, a strong finish from Fields to that round. Well, whatever it is going Ryan Fields' way, he's in control now. Looking strong, enjoying it in there. You can see he's mm. getting excited, isn't he? Different story in the Morris corner. Clifton Mitchell advertising the forthcoming Joshua Klitschko bout on the back of his shirt. Quick one on that. Do you know, uh, <laughs> counter the popular oh, belief, I think Klitschko it. might be a bad move for Joshua at this time. I just think it might be a step too far too soon. I'm, I, I, I'm, I think Klitschko. Interesting. It's Morris Fields we're primarily concerned with at the moment. And that's been a really engaging battle. Fields. Turning around, possibly Morris with the edge in the early couple of rounds. But It is a grueler, isn't it? Yep, it's all coming down the heart here. That's and Morris landed. Yeah, very good. And again, rejuvenated a little bit. Maybe it's a last gasp effort for Craig Morris. Maybe he knows it's starting to fall away from him, and this is what he needs. They've motivated him in that corner. And a good left hand and right hand. This is good effort from Craig Morris. Oh, both landing big shots. Fields turn. Yeah, I think Fields got the, the better of that little exchange there. Just sagged a bit and another big left hook. And Morris hangs on now. Now he'll be feeling it. He had that good start of the round. Morris, Fields came back at him and this is where the doubts will sink in to Morris well he's caught him with a left the guard was dropped by Morris there Fields it wasn't a heavy shot but Morris again was stopped in his track tracks now the right hand goes through he's just falling into him Fields he needs to so uh, Morris he needs to work when he comes in, he's coming behind punches. 
much as falling. Oh, what a great effort from these two. Is this just going to come down to strength and fitness and will? Good start of the round from Morris. Fields come back strong. He's fair to say. They're both a little tired now. <laughs> I think so. Oh, oh no. peach of a left. Good shot to pull out, but he took it well, Morris. Well, he's shown resilience and toughness oh, this evening. Most definitely. Most definitely has, but I think Fields is getting through with the stronger shots, the more eye-catching punches. That was a good start to the round from Craig Morris, really came out determined, but then got rocked back on his heels. And Morris then turned the tide of the round and did the, the better work. And this is getting hard for both men. Whose wheel's gonna break first? I think that's what it's down to. They're trying to give him everything they're trying to instill anything they can oh, any strength they can give him they're trying to do this is the work of the corner man to try and motivate their man bring something else something extra out of it what the undefeated fighter morris got left well we are in the championship rounds now it's how much he can dispel that tired feeling from his brain keep those hands up Two snappy body shots from Fields. Yeah. That was nice. Come out looking sharp. Maybe he's getting a second wind. Fields. Nice uppercut as well. Classy shot. And the left uppercut has been a decent weapon for Fields this evening as well. Yep. Yeah, he's got a decent variety, hasn't he? Just a faint with the right. Now faint with the left. This time, Fields is... Oh, good, solid right hand. And another one. He was just waiting for Morris coming in. Yeah, three good shots from Fields. He feels happy to sit on the ropes and see what's coming his way. Yeah, he's just waiting for Morris to make a mistake, isn't he? Making, letting him commit, and then he's coming back with something. And he's bending his knees, looking to get some power in those punches as... Morris looks to walk on to something. Oh, big, oh, two big shots. The left hook and the right hand from Fields. Another left hook. Now steps it up again, Fields, applying the pressure again. But Morris has proved what a chin he has. Yep, he's tough. But you just get the sense as these big punches come in, little by little, he's chipping away, Fields. Oh, again, classy combination, classy one-two, lots of snap. Morris comes back again, though. Yeah, the head's rocked back several times with some big shots in this round from Fields. Still he comes on, no denying the will of Craig Morris. A clever little short left as he was there as well from Fields. But he has walked on to some big shots, Morris. And another round in the bank, you feel. 
to Fields, and he's reasonably unsteady, Morris, who makes his way back to the corner. We've got to just keep an eye on him, you know, because the Brave, he's undefeated. He'll, you know, he'll desperately not want to lose that record, so, you know, he's going to try and try, but he's taking some, he's taking some big shots now, so... We just want to make sure everything's okay and he's answering questions and talking to them and six minutes separates one of these chaps from the Midland area title and you feel it is going to be a very tough hard six minutes Corners, ten seconds. Fields needs to pull something out of the bag it's all slipping away from him really since the the third round. Fields just does seem to have that bit more energy, that bit more power at this stage of the fight. Till he comes forward, don't know how he's doing it. With Craig Morris, too tough. But just walking on the punches as he comes in. Can he break the will of Ryan Fields? Who must be thinking, I've hit him with so many shots, but and yet this man's still coming. But in a way, has. Craig's bravery in a way undermined him because Ryan has worked out how to hit him on the counter when yep. he marches in and a good uppercut there from Craig Morris still in it still alert still looking for the the punches Another ebb, another flow. Another good right to the body from Fields. They must be desperately tired, but still they let the punches go. Big swings. It's Fields pushing forward. There's a left hook and a right to the body. And again, Morris though, he sucks it up and comes back for more. Straight a right. Solid right from Fields. Robocock, good one from Fields, looks for the, the left two. Feel it. Oh, go oh, the shot at the end. Another hard, hard round of boxing. Again, both fellas having successes. The eye-catching stuff still, Ryan Fields. Yeah. The incessant pressure from Morris still. A cracking battle. But in this one, you think... Fields, if he's sensible, stays out of bother, then it should be his. Well, you know, I don't think I don't think Morris is ever going to let him stay out of bother because he's been in his face all the time, and when he's been under pressure, and he's been hit with shots. He still kept coming forward. He's been non-stop trying to come forward from from Morris. Fields has just, for me, you know, in each round he's just doing a little bit extra, coming out with the better shots. Ten seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise as they come out for that 10th and final round. Well, both lads do deserve great credit.
And they meet head on once more. Well, Morris has had his successes in, in all of the rounds and he's come forward all the time. But has that counted enough or more than the clean shots that have come from Ryan Field? I feel Fields has done the, done the better. Oh, two good right hand. Nice uppercut from Morris, though. <laughs> it's tiring watching these two fellas because they're giving it yeah. all 10 rounds non-stop they're still firing away full cylinders credit to the fitness of them credit to the, the work they put in in the gym and on the roads really has been a hard for tough fight good punches as well as well And, you know, it's looked like Craig Morris wants it more, but has that been enough? Has he scored the punches that matter? And I don't think he has. I think Fields has, has got the, the better, classier punches. Obviously, the marked up face of Morris shows the, the fight he's had. Feels still, as you said before, he's probably thinking, "What have I got to do with this fella? Because I just oh. can't. Oh. Yeah. I cannot put him away for pure desire. I mean, I think he's got drawn into a fight too much for me, Craig Morris, and that, you know, something he can learn from. But for sheer desire, will chin. He's ticked all the boxes. It's just, you know, has he scored enough of the the clean punches for me? I don't think he has. I think Fields has done that. But for sheer effort from both of them, hands. hands and another up. big one again from Fields. Yep. And Morris, well, he does see the belt, as both fellows should. And that's a cracking Midland area fight. An excellent contest. But the body language, the two corners, the very different scenes tell very different tales. Yep. And certainly Ryan Fields and his team feel that he has got that one in the bag. Yeah, and I, I must agree. It was a great effort from both men. And Craig Morris, you know, superb heart. Really worked hard, but, you know, he's learned from his corner. Cliff Mitchell, well done to him. He's, you know, he's come out with the better punches. He had a game plan. He worked off that game plan. And they're happy in the... Ryan Fields corner. Dave Colwell looking confident, looking happy. He's smiling. Let's get the official verdict from our MC, Mr. Craig Stephen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a referee, Mr. Sean Messer, will bring together both these boxers. And I'm sure you will agree, area championship boxing at its finest. Let's hear it, please, for both boxers in the ring. We go to Mr. Messer's scorecard that reads 99 points to 93. The winner and the new Midlands area welterweight champion, Ryan Field. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you would like to show your appreciation for a fine outgoing champion, Craig Morris.
And it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for our supervisor from the Midlands Area Council, Mr. Richard Vaughan, will present the Midlands Area welterweight belt to the new champion, Ryan Fields. Well, the penultimate fight of the evening. What a fight as well. A Midland area belt, it did not disappoint. Ryan Fields taking the portis and overall rightly so, Glenn. Yes, I think so. Ryan Fields boxed a very good fight. He, he started to, to, it wasn't really his fight the first two rounds, he was boxing. But then, you know, as it went on, he got into a fight. He fought, found the better punches, and that was a, that was a very good win. But you've got to take you have to both men for a, for a fantastic contest. And certainly, it's a defeat that's going to be hard for Craig Morris to compute because he's not been beaten before, but these are the fights that you learn so much from, and that will make him a better boxer, will it not? Yeah, Morris, you know, he lost the fight, but he ticked an awful lot of boxers in hard, in chin. You know, he's just got to learn a bit more of the skills. The first two rounds, he used his jab very well in the straight left, and then he stopped doing that, and he took he took the fight, he took the fight in to Fields and that's when it, it suited Fields because then he could let his combinations go, you know, his better experience go and that proved the, the winner. Well now, it's the main event, we've got the big men, we've got Nathan Gorman, we have Gorgi, Gorgi Lanzi. So what are you expecting from this, what do you want to see? Well I, I think we're just looking for Nathan Gorman to continue his education against a, a different kind of opponent. Gorgi Anze is, a, is a, a cruiserweight for most of his career, so it's really about, you know, we're expecting him to give a bit more movement, to show him something different, but I think Nathan Gorman, you know, we we'll just want to see what he can do against maybe a mover, a different style, but I'm expecting him to, to get his punches off, get his power going, and, you know, just keep moving forward. Well, it is hat and boxing here at Fenton Manor. It's Nathan's time to shine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're all very welcome here to the Fenton Manor Sports Complex in Stoke, England, where Ricky Hatton's Hatton Boxing is very proud to bring you Time to Shine, the main event of the evening. Ten three-minute rounds of international heavyweight boxing. All our officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. At the bell, our timekeeper, Mr. Martin Fallon. And when the bell rings, referee in charge from Newark, Mr. Kev Parker. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance here at ringside, the officials are ready. The boxers are ready. Are you ready for the main event? <laughs> Introducing in the blue corner, wearing the black shorts with silver trim on the scales at 16 stone, two pounds. From 49 contests, he has 34 wins with 28 wins coming inside the scheduled distance. From Tbilisi, Georgia, Gogita Gorgeladze. And in the red corner, wearing the silver shorts with black trim. At the weigh-in, he scaled 18 stone, six pounds, eight ounces. A perfect record. Seven wins, no defeats. Six wins inside the scheduled distance. He is the reigning Central Area Heavyweight Champion from Nantrish, Cheshire, the undefeated Nathan Gorman! You both know the rules, I expect a clean contest. Remember to obey my commands at all times, watch your heads, don't want any low blows. Above all, protect yourselves at all times, touch gloves lads. Thank you.
So the main event, Nathan Gorman, plenty of support, as you would imagine, in the Fenton Manor Sport Complex, taking on Gogita Gorgeladze of Georgia. Just Nathan's eighth professional contest. But certainly a fighter that there's plenty of excitement about in a division that is certainly very exciting in the UK at the moment, Glenn. Yep, it's very exciting in the UK and very exciting worldwide. There's lots of new young heavyweights coming up through the ranks, leaving the GB squad. So, um, you know, he'll fit into those ranks very well indeed. He's just got to keep with it. 20 years of age, he's as young as any of them, if not the youngest. So, um, all eyes on Nathan Gorman. But this is a fight against uh, an experienced cruiserweight. So, you know, he's going to have a, a different type of opponent to, to face, somebody who might move a little bit more and might have a few more tricks. But will the power tell as it looked to there? Well, certainly plenty of snap in the early exchanges from Nathan's point of view. And a good body shot. And it up to a right to the head. Six of his seven fights to date have gone. I've gone early. He's got great power, as we can see. And Gugaladze, well, a decent enough record, 34 victories, 15 defeats. But of course, he goes on the road, he fights wherever. And, and there is the first indication of the kind of power Nathan Gorman possesses at this level, and it could be an early night for him. It's waved off straight away, a first round knockout. So Nathan Gorman making very, very early work. A statement, hard to read too much into that, I suppose, in many ways, Glenn. We've not seen an awful lot of him. No, uh, we haven't seen an awful lot, but you know, what we did see was good enough. And you know, what, I, you know, what I liked was a, a very quick left hook to the body against a, a mobile enough opponent. Now, no, <laughs> we're, not, you know, we're, not, we're not expecting we're not expecting great deal. We've got to look at him at the level he's at. You know, not you know, not get carried away. But you know, he's 20 years of age. He's in with a very, very experienced fighter there in Gorgaladze. You know, he's had 59 fights. He's won 34, 28 KOs. You know, he knows what he's doing in a ring. He's been in with some good fighters, and he just wipes them out there. So there's great power. Um, obviously, you know, we're not going to get too carried away because we need to see him in with. Lots of various opponents, but at the moment, you've got to say, you know, ticking some boxes. Lots of snap. He's got a bit of power, as, as well as the pace that he, he's shown as well. He's, he's, he, you know, I, I was really looking forward to see a few more rounds just to see what he brought. I've, obviously, I've seen some quick wins from him, but, you know, he's, he's quicker than his, his actual size belies. Um, you see that there's, there is power there, and he's very, very young. And you think, you know, Anthony Joshua had barely put a glove on at this age. And, you know, he's, he's banging out opponents that have had, you know, 59 fights. Well, well, let's get the official verdict from our MC, Mr. Craig Stephen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the referee Kev Parker has both their boxers. And it's great to see Gugika Goraladze back on his feet. The end comes at 1 minute and 49 seconds of round number one. When referee Kev Barker dispenses with the count, the winner by technical count out, still undefeated Nathan Gorman. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, please your appreciation all the way from Georgia, Gogita Gorgeladze. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, just before you head off out the door. I'm going to grab a quick word with our promoter, Ricky Hatton. I know that uh, he thanked you through me, but I know he wants to do it himself. Ricky, another great night here at Stoke. Yeah, wonderful night in Stoke. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone for turning out and supporting the, the local talent. I think you can see we've got a few future champions on the bill there tonight. But uh, as always, you know, the fans always meant a lot to me and I'm sure that your support has meant a lot to all the youngsters on the bill tonight. So thanks for coming everyone and I'll see you next time everyone. Thanks a lot. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, from all at Hats and Boxing, thank you once again for turning out of a very safe journey home and enjoy the rest of your weekend. From all of us here, a very good night. Good night. Well, what a night. Hatton Boxing here at the Fenton Manor Sports Complex. And top of the bill, Nathan Gorman. He certainly did the business. I'm a bit disappointed, though, because I wanted to see so much of Nathan. But, you know, he's got a job to do, and he did it in clinical, ruthless fashion, didn't he, Glenn? Yeah, but I think as a heavyweight and a young heavyweight, it's the knockouts that you want to see. You want to see the power against opponents like that. Yes, he was, he was experienced, had a lot of fights, knew his way around the ring, but he's a cruiserweight, and you want to see uh, a young, exciting 20-year-old heavyweight doing that to opponents. That's what gets you excited, and that's what the heavyweight division is all about. So good luck to Nathan. He enjoyed that, didn't get a sweat on, but put a, put a, you know, a reasonable opponent out who's very, very experienced. And you're talking about a 20-year-old. Let's, let's just get this into context. That was, that was a good performance from a 20-year-old novice. Well, that's the thing. He looks so exciting. I just want to see more and more of him. That's just his, his eighth fight, but he's shown he's got speed as well as power. But you're talking about his eighth fight. He's going to be around the, the top 10 heavyweights in Britain. You're after eight fights at 20 years of age. So that just put, puts it into context as well. Yes, he's a novice. And yes, we've got to see him against better opponents. But what he's doing is, is he's doing very, very well indeed. And that's what gets you excited in a very exciting division. And he's almost kind of ready, as you say, to be launched, isn't he? Because he's got his fan base. He's got a noisy crowd behind him. He's got that pedigree. He's got the story with Bartley Gorman. He's the great nephew of him, the old bare knuckle champ. And, and there's so many heavyweights. And, and, you know, just up the road, the likes of Huey Fury. It's just, it's, yeah, it's all there's, there's happening, so isn't it? so many. And, you know, he seems such a, a nice kid as well. It is a good story. He will get good support yes there's a long way to go but like every heavyweight and every prospect coming up you've got to give credit where credit's due you know if you get in the win you'd have said yeah we expect it but to do it in that fashion you know he was helpless uh, his opponent and and it was a great great shot the body was very 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 fast and uh, you know very decisive but what a top night of boxing we've had as well. Some other Excellent. standout performances yep, as yep. well. Ryan Fields, but going right down the card as well. A top night of Hatton boxing. Really was, you know, all the way through. All the four rounds were, were very good. Getting to the championship fights and then the last two fights, really excellent, you know. Both for, for different reasons. A very quick finish and won a hard four ten rounder. But there you are. But the top of the bill, Nathan Gorman, he did what his fans wanted him to do. It was an early night for him and a great night for us. It was time to shine. <laughs>